Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Out YouTube channel, and in the video today, we're looking at whether saccharin is bad for you. Saccharin is noted as being the first artificial sweetener outside of the toxic lead to acetate, and the first product to offer a cheap alternative to cane sugar. Interestingly enough, it was also discovered entirely by accident. The chemical was discovered in 1878 to 1879 in a small lab at Johns Hopkins University. The lab belonged to professor of chemistry and all-around chemistry boffin Ira Remsen. Remsen was hired by the H. W. Perrow import firm in 1877, primarily Primarily so that the firm could loan the use of his lab to a young Russian chemist and sugar nerd, Konstantin Falberg. The H. W. Perot company wanted Falberg to test the purity of a shipment of sugar that had impounded by the U.S. government using Remsen's lab. Falberg agreed and happily conducted the tests. After it finished, Falberg continued to work in Remsen's lab on various things, such as developing coal tar derivatives. On the momentous day in question after working in the lab, Falberg was at home about to tuck into his meal when he noticed that the bread roll he'd just taken a bite out of tasted incredibly sweet. After ruling out the possibility of the bread roll coming that way, Falberg came to the conclusion that he must have accidentally spilled a chemical onto his hands. Rather than immediately sticking his fingers down his throat, throwing up and then rushing to a hospital, Falberg reportedly became positively excited at the thought of his new discovery. Yes, the first non-toxic artificial sweetener was discovered because a scientist didn't wash his hands after getting chemicals all over them, not unlike how the effects of LSD were first discovered. At this point, Falberg didn't know which of the many chemicals he'd been working with that day had caused the sweet taste he'd experienced. With no alternative in mind, he resorted to going back to his lab and tasting every chemical he'd left on his desk for science. In any event, Falberg eventually discovered the source of the sweet chemical, a beaker filled with sulfobenzoic acid, phosphorus chloride, and ammonia. This deadly-sounding cocktail had boiled over earlier in the day, creating benzoic sulfonide, a compound Falberg was familiar with but had never had a reason to try shoving into his mouth before that day. Falberg quickly penned a paper with Remsen describing the compound and the methods of creating it. Published in 1879, the paper listed both Remsen and Falberg as the compound creators. However, just a few short years later, when he apparently realized the compound's enormous commercial potential, Falberg changed his mind when he patented saccharin in 1886. He listed himself as the sole creative mind behind it. Falberg had also applied for an earlier patent on a method of creating saccharin cheaply and efficiently in 1884. There is no agreed-upon consensus on who exactly came up with what in regards to saccharin. Some sources say Remsen wanted to be listed as a co-discoverer purely because saccharin was discovered in his lab. This is supported by the fact that it's noted that by the time Falberg came onto the scene, Remsen was the president of Johns Hopkins University and was thus absent from the lab most of the time. Others claim Remsen was instrumental in the discovery, supported by the fact that earlier in his life he had published many papers on sulfobenzoic acids. As for what Remsen had to say of the matter, Falberg is a scoundrel. It nauseates me to hear my name mentioned in the same breath with him. Regardless, Falberg's new artificial sweet advertised as a non-fattening alternative to sugar, was fairly successful right off the bat in the United States, though it wouldn't be until sugar shortages in World War II that it would become a widespread hit. For those who are curious, the body doesn't metabolize saccharin, meaning it has no caloric or nutritional value unlike sugar. And for all you health-conscious types, no, saccharin isn't dangerous to humans. This may come as a surprise, considering that starting in the 1970s, and as recent as a little over a decade ago, the widespread belief was that it caused cancer. This was despite the fact that in 1974, the National Academy of Sciences performed a review of all the studies done on saccharin and determined that there was no sound evidence that saccharin was a carcinogen and that the only studies that claimed to show it were flawed or otherwise ambiguous in their results. One particular flawed study from the 1970s was nearly the final nail in the coffin of saccharin when the researchers found that saccharin could lead to bladder cancer in rats. This spurred the Saccharin Study and Labeling Act of 1977, which managed to thwart efforts to ban saccharin outright, instead simply getting it a severe warning label. Use of this product may be hazardous to your health. This product contains saccharin, which has been determined to cause cancer in laboratory animals. The rats in the study did indeed have a high rate of bladder tumors. However, beyond any potential flaws in the methodology, there is the obvious caveat
caveat that, while similar in many ways, rodents and humans aren't exactly the same. It's a shocker, I know. So further studies needed to be done to see if the same thing occurred in humans. What was happening with the rats is that the specific attributes in their urine – high pH, high proteins, and high calcium phosphate – was, combined with the undigested saccharin, causing microcrystals to form in their bladders. This caused damage to their bladder lining, which over time caused tumors to form on their bladders as they were continually having to be repaired. Once the exact cause of the tumors was determined, exhaustive tests were done to see if the same thing was happening in primates. In the end, the results came up completely negative, with no microcrystals forming. Thanks to this, in 2000, saccharin was removed from the U.S. National Toxicology Program's list of substances that might cause cancer. The next year, both the state of California and the United States Food and Drug Administration removed it from their list of cancer-causing substances. In 2010, the Environmental Protection Agency concurred, stating that saccharin is no longer considered a potential hazard to human health. The 70s wasn't the final time that this compound came under fire, though. A much earlier and equally as unfounded panic occurred as a result of the Pure Food and Drug Act of 1906. Harvey Wiley, the director of the Bureau of Chemistry for the USDA, considered saccharin inferior to sugar and lobbied hard against it, even going so far as telling President Teddy Roosevelt that everyone who ate that sweet corn was deceived. He thought he was eating sugar, when in point of fact he was eating a coal tar product totally devoid of food value and extremely injurious to health. While he got the totally devoid of food value part correct, the latter injurious to health part wasn't actually backed by any vetted evidence at the time or since. Roosevelt, who ate saccharin regularly, stated, Anybody who says saccharin is injurious to health is an idiot. Needless to say, Wiley soon lost much of his credibility and his job. So I really hope you found that video interesting and informative. If you did, please do hit that like button below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, if you like this video, check out some of our other videos which are over there on the right. And thanks for watching.